Yeah. Okay, so just let me finish my intro. We'll try it again. What's up, everybody? My name is Richard Terrell. I also go by Kirby Kid, and you are watching Do Live. Do Live is a daily stream show in which we talk about game design. All this discussion really starts on our Discord, the link to which you can find on our Twitter, and we kind of do a daily live stream just to kind of wrap things up and show things live. Uh, these videos also go on our YouTube channel, but for the most part, we've been covering Super Smash Brothers for the last two and a half weeks. This is episode 20 of our 20 years of Smash Brothers series, so it's a grand finale. I got to get through a whole bunch of topics. Uh, I'll go over the Smash resume before the end of the video, but right now, uh, I got a friend on Smash Ultimate, or not Smash Ultimate, Smash 4, jeez. I do that every time a new Nintendo console comes out or a new Smash, I just automatically switch and all my uh, labels and words get mixed up. But for the most part, we got Smash right here. And uh, we're gonna be demonstrating something that I had a really curious thought about. So in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about how the Smash meta developed. We're gonna talk about shields. We're gonna talk about offense and pressure and all these other kind of interesting topics. But really one interesting thing that people have sort of touched on throughout Smash 4's lifetime, go ahead and pick an Omega stage, by the way. Um, any Omega stage is fine. One interesting thing people kept saying is like how annoying it is to get around shields. And you've heard me say before that tilts are a little underpowered and ground moves are a little underpowered in Smash. I'm gonna explain exactly what I mean by that. But for the start of this video, we're gonna do something interesting. We are currently using customized fighters. And one feature that I didn't really touch on before is how Smash 4 has custom moves. And in addition to having custom special moves, there are these um, equipment badges that kind of alter the stats of your character. Um, so what we did is we upped our attack about a hundred points uh, to the sacrifice of some of our defense but that really doesn't matter. We upped our attack and now we're gonna see how Smash 4 plays in specifically around shields when our attacks do more damage. Uh, so go ahead and join me in the room and we can we can take it from there. It looks like looks like he'll be coming shortly but I'll explain how Smash works. Like we saw before with the frame data, Smash is pretty complicated. It's got a lot of uh, particular parameters and rules and stats, and this goes well beyond frame data because every move needs to have like a property, and every move needs to have a damage value, and every move needs to have all these other particular pieces of data just to get it working in the first place. But one thing that I believe for Smash's benefit that Sakurai uh, designed is almost everything revolves around damage. So. Uh, the amount of knockback your opponent takes it's a large part mostly due to your damage uh, and then it's those other tuning factors like knockback growth knockback whatever um, the amount of shield stun you deliver to your opponent is directly calculated based on your damage and with still move that can get a little annoying right there's pretty much too many shifting uh, minute small qualities with um, a lot of the stats in Smash, but we kind of live with it and deal with it. But in general, um, let me see, stale move, not that, not Discord. Everything is revolved around how much damage you do. So by upping the damage that our characters are going to be doing to each other, we're going to actually increase, let's see, the, sh the safety of our moves on shield. That's going to allow us to do extra pressure uh, against people. It's going to allow us to do a whole bunch of hopefully new offensive things. We're going to see just how one little change seemingly uh, to a single sort of class of stats and smash can change the way we play. So I open the room up again. Uh, Capitan Sito? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead and join in again and uh, pick your one of your characters with the custom moves. Okay. Are you going to pick Dr. Mario or Ike to start? Um, I'll pick Ike, so just not to not do the sort of ditto. Okay, cool. I'll do Mario, Mario, and we'll jump into some kind of Omega stage. Alright. So, how long have you been playing Smash, and just in general? Um, over, uh, in general, not just the competitive side. Yeah, in general, and then competitive. Um, like, since I can remember, I picked up, I picked up a controller, like, uh, uh, around five years old. Oh, cool. <laughs> Young. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, wow. So as you can see there, one up tilt. Instead of doing around, what is it, <laughs> six damage? It does 14. So it's about double. It does um, seven damage. Oh, yeah, seven. Okay, go ahead and jab me with I can see how much damage that does. Full, full jab or just, just one? Just one. Seven damage for one jab. So obviously, <laughs> our damage is a little off the charts, but... Uh, like I said before, what that mainly affects, let me just adjust the frame right here. Do, 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 build it in. Oh, that should improve the frame rate. Uh, let me try that one more time. Refresh. Okay, so what that mainly affects is how. <laughs> like how much combo damage we do, it kind of gets ridiculous, but also uh, what happens on shield. So go ahead and jab my shield, and I'll try to roll away. Do it again. Oops. Uh, my bad. <laughs> it's too low, so I think it's gonna pop. There you go. Just wake me up with another Damn. seven damage jab. There you go. Okay, now jab. <laughs> it actually does like a lot more, so you can feel it. All the all the ways we play in Smash are tuned around like our expectations of how long these moves are going to take and how quickly we can recover. Uh, so in this case, we're going to show some s common situations in um, uh, matchups to see how the new shield damage will do. So go ahead and like jump forward, Airby. Man, that's wow. pretty uh, that's pretty impactful, right? Like took half my shield yeah. by the way. So like two forward airs, it'll break, which is pretty crazy. Another way to yeah. sort of nerf shields, but go ahead and uh, try neutral air. Oh man, that's, that's also oh, destroyed my shield. So that's crazy, right? Yeah. And uh, if he if he does that into my shield, I'm gonna try to shield grab your neutral layer, and you can try to uh, neutral layer and jab me. Oh my gosh! Not only did my grab come out late, but it made me slide twice as far. All right, and then that just utterly breaks it. That's crazy. <laughs> try again. Oh wow. I, I think it pushes you way too much. Oh uh, yeah, so that's that's one thing I did notice. It does. So like like I said before, everything is dependent on damage. How much you slide back, how much shield stun you take, and uh, you know your combo potential. Wow. Perfect shielding actually nullifies all shield slide and uh, makes it to where you recover it pretty fast. So perfect shielding still intact, right? <laughs> uh, but everything yeah. else is different. <laughs> oh wow. So, uh, wow, that's mega damage. So, let's take a common situation that happens, uh, like you shield and I'll jab you. Normally, <laughs> so drop shield jab, uh, try to shield grab. Shield grab still works, these jabs only do slightly more. But then you can see the significant pushback, right? Like with a few jabs, unless he times yeah. it perfectly, uh, he's at a disadvantage. Normally, yeah, the opponent has a decent advantage trying to guess when you're gonna, um, when there's a hole, but now the player is at a much greater disadvantage, which gives just a basic move like jabs and up tilts. Yeah, see that up tilt pushed him back enough yeah. that the shield grab didn't even work. I could down tilt too. And I poked. Let me try again. Yeah, I'm still close right there, so if I space my down tilt, <laughs> wow, down throw. If I space my down tilt a little yeah. better. Uh, Still, still pretty in trouble. So, like, not every move is gonna be safe. Forward tilt will, right? Because this, you can do this in normal Smash without the augments. If you angle your forward tilt angle down, it actually puts Mario's leg out of the way of being counter grabbed, which is hard to do. But nobody really does that. So, in general, now we know that our, you can try something on me if you want. Uh, just let me know what you want to do. Uh, uh, I'll try down tilt. Okay, I'll kill myself real quick. Cause... Yeah, me too. So, how do people normally counter Ike's still down tilt? Um, I they can. I don't. I think it's pretty. If I space it right, I think they can't. But some most of the time they jab or uh, dash grab. Okay, so I'll try doing one of those to counter this. Wow, not even yeah. close to dash grabbing. I'm like, Mario's not too fast, but it's not too slow. So I'm going to try to drop shield jab. Let's try that now. <laughs> Good luck. Pushes is way too, way too far. And I'm going to try to jump in short hop near. So let's see what happens. And yeah, but then, so that's, so what's cool about this is it looks like the immediate, my frame rate's a little low. I'm going to try to address that real quick because it should be a lot smoother than this. Oops, no, not that. 
So I can probably do this to smooth it up a little bit, and I could probably do... Yeah, it's probably a little smoother now. Okay, that's better. So, now it looks like instead of having... Like, try to down tilt again, I'll be in your face. Yes. So that's uh, Mar So Mario has short range. Everybody needs to realize that. I picked Mario because yeah. I play Mario and I feel like his his normals are pretty weak and underutilized. We're seeing how this one small change will make Mario's uh, tilts and his jabs a little bit better. So that's that's why I'm playing Mario. But other characters have more range. So like, do the down tilt at close range. Oop. I'll try to get. See, uh, other characters would be able to at least. Uh, keep him in range. I think Ike was barely in range, but he clashed with my down tilt. So that's crazy. So now all of this sort of relative timing differences and um, the offensive to defense table is now different. Now instead of do a thing, they're going to obviously punish you. Do a thing, they're going to punish you with something like severe, like a dash grab or whatever. Now it's a little bit uh, what we call murky, a little hazy. Uh, the, there's a lot more low risk, low reward uh, exchanges now that don't just turn into combos. So now try down tilting. And I'm gonna jump in neutral air, but then you can shield in time. And if you shield that in time, see how you can respond to that, like with a uh, uh, a drop shield or something. Yeah, but then see now that my neutral air does more impact, he can't just easily go, haha, I reacted to your thing, and I'm gonna to try to counter you. Try to counter my neutral air. Yeah, so then I think I had enough time to actually get around that. Let's see. Oh, jab, nice. Oh. Try again. Missed. Yeah, it says so much impact it might actually eat your inputs. Yeah, and I had a little time to yeah. get away, but then try to get an up smash. I'm gonna try to punish your up smash. So let's and go. Oh, wow. Yeah, hold on. We'll wait till your shield comes back. All right, here we go. Oh, barely in time. So that's cool. I had to actually fast fall and then buffer the shield just to counter uh, the shield grab. Now, I was actually supposed to get out of the way and dash grab you. Try it one more time. So that, uh, obviously, I smash is slow. He's one of the slower recovering smashers in the game. But still, the, yeah. the windows are tighter now. And I feel like um, that's two things Smash needed. More sort of, uh, like, not safe approaches, but more ways that encourage the ground game options and more ways for it not to just like ruin your day with like uh, simple dash grab responses. Like now I have to actually think about yeah. what attack I want to do and where. So uh, now, now let's, uh, what, what other one thing I want to test? I guess we did the tilts, we did the jabs, and now we did the aerial. So now we can just kind of play around and see how it feels just a normal play. All right. <laughs> a huge oh, wow. back air. <laughs> Six damage for one. Uh -oh. <laughs> 56 damage for one combo. Wow. It's a little lag now. Don't worry about it. Let's see what we can oh. do. Let's... Oh no. Uh, uh, this happens. No. This, <laughs> right when it gets fun, this is exactly what happens with Smash. Yeah. <laughs> but at least at least we demonstrated the concepts. Uh, I think maybe 100 plus in the attack category maybe a little much. Uh, but... Yeah. Uh, it was too much. <laughs> too much. Uh, I'm gonna switch to Kirby. We can try again. If it lags out too much, then we'll just call it. Uh, we'll call it a session there. Uh, the room's still open. All right. <laughs> Up and down. Right, that's Mario. Then. Cool. So here we go. Another Omega stage. Just keep things simple. I did 52 damage with two attacks. Okay. That were, yeah, yeah. That were smash attacks. Yeah, smash attacks are ridiculous. So, like, I saw on, what was it, um, Ganondorf in Smash Ultimate did a up smash or a forward smash, and it did 30 damage in Ultimate. Now, Ultimate already has, like, the damage buff to 1v1 matches, so we're kind of playing in that similar style. So now my down air is even safer on your shield, which is for me 19 damage 
<laughs> the 31 damage from one back here. That's ridiculous. <laughs> oh my gosh. 20 damage. That. Ooh, nice perfect shield. So if you normal shield that, that would have been bad news for you. But again, this kind of increases the uh, importance of perfect shield. <laughs> yeah, you have a huge advantage. So Mario's wow. neutral layer gets stronger as it stays out, I think, just like in melee. So that was like a huge advantage that I just held shield and was afraid, and then I lost big time on that exchange, yeah. which is neat. It did extreme amount of shields. <laughs> like Smash 64 amounts, right? I don't know if you played Smash 64, but that, wow. that game is pretty intense shield so much. Oh yeah, no! I mean, Kirby there. Oh, cool. <laughs> Good one. Back. I want. Damn. So one of the arguments I'm trying to make is. Wow. <laughs> yeah, back air does twenty something. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> See now my jabs are much safer on shield. It pushed you away. I wasn't afraid of a counterattack, but you weren't in too much danger. That's the other cool part. It, instead of people, see, like instead of people being afraid, it's so. Ah! Instead of people being afraid, it encourages them to get in there, which is why people generally say, like, I want the game to be offensive. But there's multiple ways to do it, and I argue that, you know, decreasing landing lag is not the best way. Uh, just making shields unsafe would be all you really need. And not just unsafe, but more interesting. Oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I agree with you. What I get, I get what you're saying, because, like... Ooh. I went flying. Taking off... Everybody's landing line would be like, hey. Yeah. Like, we don't want people to escape people more. We want people to stick together more. Yeah. Ooh, ah. but, oh, wow. So you, so you, right there, let's stop. You drop shield countered uh, down tilt to my down air. And normally that would be something you would expect to do with the lesser shield stun. But I'm going to down air again and see if you can drop shield down tilted. I jabbed right there. Oh, Let's try again. Let's try again. I barely had enough time to shield the down air. That means if Mar Dr. Mario jabs, he can probably get me before I can shield. Let's try it. I barely shielded that in time. So now we, we kind of know um, the different risk reward. His jab is safe, but then his jabs in general, when you want to three, are not safe. His tilt's slower, but then I could counter that with my jab. So now just from this basic setup, we have just a little bit more like what's going to happen. And just because these are jabs and tilts, nothing crazy is going to happen, but it's it keeps the flow going without necessarily having to roll back, jump away, air dodge away, like all that. We're in there, and that's like my favorite part of Smash. Oh, wow. 36. I hate that one. Nice. I want to project that No. <laughs> Wow. Take your medicine. Ah. No. No. <laughs> okay, I'm back on the stage. <laughs> nice air dodge. Ooh, back throw? No, up throw. <laughs> I didn't know what I wanted to do. Oh, nice. Cool. It, 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 it took away your power and Yeah, that's so double, <laughs> double dishonor. Yeah. So uh, that's all I really want to show. Uh, thank you for joining me, Captain Sito. Uh, I'm going to carry on with my stream, but if you guys want to experiment more with this sort of thing, you can do it with your own equipment. You can vary the attack uh, damage levels. I considered doing the adjusted um, knockback thing that you can do in these settings but then i figured that wouldn't change the damage that only changes the knockback in order to get the shield yeah. effect we want you have to change the damage and there's only one way to do that that i know of uh so thanks for joining me i'm going to carry on my street any last words yeah no problem oh it was great seeing your idea of what's gonna what it's gonna be mm -hmm. i found it very interesting yeah. and yeah cool thanks all right later all right.
cool. So I'm going to now return to this list here, and we're going to carry on with our super long finale stream. Uh, pop that over here, do one of these, and we're going to cover a lot of what you just saw in a little bit more detail. Is that the new Mario meta? I hope so. <laughs> Being aggressive. Okay, so we're going to kind of bounce around this list and just try to explain everything a little bit more interestingly. The only thing I want to say about counters is that um, in Smash Melee, counters were initially introduced with characters like Marth and Roy and Peach, new characters for Melee. Uh, Peach's counter is pretty cool. Um, Marth and Roy's is cool because it does the damage back. Mars was a little underwhelming in Melee, but a lot of edge guarding situations found really cool uses for it. So I would say counters were pretty good, all right, in Melee. Um, I think they were weaker in Brawl, actually. But in Smash 4, you know, the new design philosophy for all counters across the board was like, okay, they start up in about six frames, and uh, which means you can't just like spam it and get out of small, tight timing windows. But they're strong. So when they're strong, people should want to do them more. And I believe people feel the strength of them, and it's cool to threaten a counter. But we see with Bayonetta, counters can be really powerful if you can get the right uh, situation. Bayonetta's overpowered, but at least they use counter, which is cool. Mars use counter is still in edge guarding uh, nowadays, even though Mars counter scales with damage, so it's much stronger. A character just like Ike is really interesting. Um, I saw Ike counter an Olimar charge up smash, and Olimar was like at 12 damage or whatever on the right side of Final Destination, and the counter killed him across the entire stage, right? So using one of your most powerful attacks and being countered with a strong counter, incredibly powerful. You don't see a lot of it happening, but it happens, and it's enough to sort of be a threat and, a, and make people afraid. Um, as far as how counters are compared to other designs, you can look at Street Fighter 4 and Goken. He has a counter that is either high or low, right? You have to guess high or low. Or if you EX it, he does both, but that's burning some meter. And all other fighters, counters are a little riskier because though they come out faster, you have to do that guessing element. Smash is one of the only games where it's like, hey, the counter is not only all around your body, it makes you fully invincible, and you get this counter attack. Uh, Corrin's counter was too strong when it first came out, just stuff like that. Uh, Lucario's is interesting because you can decide which way you want to attack, and that can keep the flow going. And then Greninja's, I think, is the most interesting. Countering and holding straight up and lifting them into the air and doing more follow-ups. Incredibly interesting, incredibly underutilized for both edge guarding and everything else. Uh, so I think counters are good. I don't think they need to be buffed anymore in Smash Ultimate, but maybe these other changes to the game. So here, here's the cool thing about balance. If you want, balance is really a high level concept. I'll show you the, uh, the Dio design well, by the way. So this will help me explain it. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, design oriented uh, VG thought subverse three. <clears throat> Here we go. Design is a high or balance is a high level concept. We color it with this little dark purple. It deals with the de design space, which is a way of organizing and understanding the various elements that gameplay and levels are composed of. It outlines the game's potential as well as the functional and creative limitations. This topic includes everything from emergent possibilities and level specific matchups, like in a fighting game. Uh, so like design space is really a cool way to just understand what your game's capable of and when we're talking about <coughs> Smash the balance between characters is like one slice of that design space like one lens in order to to view the game um, You know balance is here the relative effectiveness of gameplay elements compared to other gameplay elements so you can balance characters, like a tier list with their viability, but you can also balance a game for like, I want more players to fight in the air. I want more players to stick to the ground. I want edge guarding to be a more prominent thing. And while I explained before that's like a two-sided problem, one, can you design a game to where that's a possible, and two, can you teach and encourage the community to do it, whether it's through design or through like tutorial videos or whatever, it's, the sky's the limit. Uh, so what we're, what we're looking at here is, um, a design challenge that, and a design issue I want to address for Smash. Sometimes you look at it and you go, I really think counters were not used for an entire generation of a game, counters. But the way to address this problem may not be as straightforward as just buffing or nerfing counters. It may be as sort of uh, indirect and as uh, sort of elusive as, what if we just increase shield stun? You're like, how would that increase the likelihood of counters? Like, well, that's what I'm here to explain, but essentially, if you increase shield stun, you're going to make it to where uh, attacks are safer. Not entirely safe, safer. And then I'll encourage other people to 
uh, see these opportunities and consider their counterattacks instead of defensive options like roll, spot, dodge, or dash away. When people are attacking more, the back and forth, the language that the characters are negotiating with becomes attacks instead of just pure movement all the time. And when people are attacking more, counters become more viable, and all of a sudden, counters are strong again, right? Changing one thing here in the game may affect so many other things down the line. Uh, Arrow looping is an exclusive thing to brawl. Uh, I'm like the best arrow looper in the world because I practice this a lot. And um, I really want to do, I really want to show you, like I have my, where is it? I got my copy of Brawl shipped to me and I got my copy of um, Smash Melee. <laughs> but, and I have, I borrowed a GameCube, but then I don't have the power cord to the GameCube and I don't have a Wiimote to activate on my <laughs> Wii U to play Brawl, so like I can't even show you this. This makes me so sad, but one day I will explain and show you the craziness of arrow looping. And it's a perfect example of how Smash is designed systemically instead of uh, discreetly for express purpose. The arrows in Brawl, um, you can have four of them in the sky at once, If you can, and while you shoot them, you can control them always, 100% of the time. Whether your character's in hit stun, hurt, dying, dead, <laughs> coming back to the little hover platform or whatever, you can control the arrows. And with a love sort of know-how and 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 uh, skill, you can keep the arrows looping like infinitely in the sky and have them like zoom over your shoulders and battle for you. It's, it's crazy, but the reason that's possible is just because of a few rules. Don't let don't kill the arrow projectile when it goes off the blast zone, and two, uh, just always let the player control it. And normally in a fighting game, you throw a projectile, it's out of your control, it's over, it lasts for a few seconds if that and then it's gone forever but in this one case you uncheck those boxes and this technique called arrow looping became possible now being one of the best arrow loopers in the world probably the best i will say that it's a waste of time practicing arrow looping and this is one of the downsides to a game like smash not only is it harder to figure out how moves work but sometimes when you discover a system in the game that you want to delve deeply into it may not actually help you win matches or play the game better at all. It could just be like a, a black hole that sucks up your time and energy and all of a sudden like you're getting yourself killed in matchups because you want to try to get arrow looping to work and it just isn't designed to work. And that's a kind of a problem. And I want to see less of that kind of design in Smash and more thoughtful, considered, balanced and, and functional design, which is what Smash 4 did, especially compared to Brawl, which is another reason why I like Smash 4 so much. So I'll maybe show you that one day. And Brawl is an example of balance. And Meta Knight and Brawl. <laughs> yeah, how to break it. Um, that actually brings up another good point I wanted to uh, address. Meta Knight and Brawl was a nightmare. <laughs> and um, his mock tornado like eats up almost every attack in the game, whether it's on the air or the ground. You have to have like a really disjointed sword or something to kick through it. But then there was these weird exceptions they made for very specific attacks to break through it no matter what. Smash isn't a game where you want to memorize a table of exceptions just to get the game to work. I think the beauty of Smash, just like with damage, how so much is revolves around damage, everything is pretty much what you see. So if it looks like you can hit something, you probably should be able to hit it. If the character is glowing, they're probably invincible. Uh, and if there's a... If Diddy's forward tilt and brawl could just randomly break through the mock tornado like 100% of the time, like they hard-coded it to work, then why can't the other characters do it? Pitt's forward tilt didn't work. Um, Pitt's down tilt didn't work. Like Only the back air pit if you attack the top of the tomato, tornado worked, and that's because the tornado has a weak spot on the top. But like, why would they make certain attacks arbitrarily just counter this one character's move? Like That's bad design. It leaves all these sort of inconsistencies in the way that people think about the game and have to learn it and again Smash 4 moved away from making special cases like that and more of a universal system so yeah like Smash in order to for players to sort of manage all this crazy complexity you have to sort of design smarter like this you have to design more holistically you gotta let the systems um, do what they do without having the need to go in there and like no well this is a little overpowered so let's just make an exception let's just make an exception try to do as little of that as possible and I noticed that one thing uh, Sakurai, I think he didn't like so much is he put f fuel in the game and Rob's up B has fuel, so it only has so many uses. Um, maybe I can show you that. Um, Villager's up B has fuel. A lot of people don't know that. Olimar's recovery has fuel. So if they're hovering around the air too much, 
uh, they'll they won't be able to do it no matter what until they touch the ground and like stay a few seconds on the ground. Pits up special and brawl had fuel too. A lot of people didn't know that, but you refreshed it by briefly touching the ground. That's really not good enough. <laughs> that just made it to where I could abuse other techniques. Uh, so when we're talking about ways and design trends that kind of affected a lot of how Smash has evolved over time, trying to make each move in itself individual. Spammable, but not broken is the goal. And I think that's why, let me show you. Smash Melee, Mario's cape decays with every use. So it hovers him a little bit and then it decays. Uh, I think in Smash Brawl, some moves like Kirby's side hammer in the air did not decay. He could use it once per jump and just kind of hover like crazy. And like, it just creates all these annoying stalling runaway problems and the whole thing just, eh. I'm gonna continue to use my custom my custom Mario by the way. Let me switch over. So yeah, you're gonna look at a lot of design just getting tighter and tighter and cleaner and cleaner, taking out arbitrary no well taking out the need for players to memorize values invisibly in their head. Now you saw in the new Smash Ultimate, Rob's fuel now is displayed on the side of his body as like a little gauge that you can see and that's and it lights up. That's super cool. Again, understanding design, understanding design problems and taking these these design principles and applying them across the game is what we're really talking about here. This is high level stuff and it's not just complaining about a matchup or a level. We're talking about overall like what's happening to smash so like mario's cape notice that he hovers about the same amount one two three every time let's see it one two about the same amount uh, in smash melee there's a much more dramatic effect of how much less hover he gets so again keeping it to where you have to memorize internal amounts of decay and minimizing that is something that smash uh four did I don't know why this, the frame rate's so choppy, but you know, life goes on. Oh, maybe it's this. Let's see. Configure. Um, video settings. <laughs> video output. So it's 59.9 frames per second. Cancel. Up, 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 up. Video input. <laughs> That's I see that helps. Maybe not. Okay. So uh, another topic that I wanted to touch on. Let's see if this works. Is just one of the smaller things uh the multi air dodge in smash uh, i think it's a, a much better system that encourages um different ways that the the players move and fight in smash and i think one of the best ways to explain this is to sort of draw a picture right so now i have this google drawing uh app up so let me see if i can just very basically explain what i mean there there's your stage maybe i'll make it thicker line weight how about eight there we go there's the stage, here's a platform. Okay, cool. Uh, here's a character, shape, box, color. Uh, I don't know how to do color. Wow. Format options. Well, somehow you can do color, but there's a box. Yeah, hey, you change it here. We're gonna do that Mario. We're gonna make him small. And here's your opponent. Another box. I'm gonna make that DK. He's big and brown. Uh, oh, that was a text box. We don't want that. This. And you are brown. Cool. Okay, so what this is what I mean mainly when I talk about this interesting design concept of, of fixing Smash or addressing Smash design issues. Uh, in Brawl, like I said before in the yesterday stream, it emphasized air battles, and they did that by adding an air, air dodge and making the whole game floatier, so that players stay in the air longer and they can do more defensive things without leaving the zone. And that allowed multiple characters to attack and re-attack and, and change all these different sort of relative positionings vertically and horizontally as they fall through the air. That's what we call an air battle. Nothing too complicated about it, but it's something that you don't see at all. 
in uh, other games like Smash 64 or Melee, and it's something that's really not as big of a part in Smash 4 just because of those specific roles and those specific systems. So here's a neat little flowchart to address some of the problems I see with Smash. A lot of people say they like offense. Uh, one thing in Smash 4 that's annoying is that when players attack other players' shields, which can I make a shield? Can I do that? Can I make this, this little like boing and transparency? Can I address that? Field color, border color, border dash, text box, transparency. Oh, maybe I'll just push the back. There we go. It's a shield. Okay, so when other other player, whenever players attack their shield, this is what happens in Smash. The screen is so small and so zoomed out that you may not be able to see what attack is used like right before the player hits the ground. That's, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it gives an advantage to the attacker because they know what attack they did and the defender does not. So from the defender's perspective, you know, in the early days you try to shield grab everything, like just shield grab everything. Let's see what happens if this guy tries attacking. Shield grab everything and yeah, shield grab. And that's kind of how we, the first defensive option we had to play around. Uh, and then people started to, yeah, space around a shield grab. So what people started doing was after, this computer's so annoying, after people attack, they like, I smash out of shield. Like, why not? I smash. I smash. Yeah, it's a counter. And that happened a lot in Smash 4's early meta. Like, people just holding shield and up smashing. It's, Smash's early meta, Smash 4, had less shield stun, and that came at a later patch. So definitely these things were annoying. So, to get around that, players either try to hit you at the very tippy toes of their attack ranges, which is not a bad thing. Like, being able to aim and control your character is kind of a skill that we need to stress. That's why we have sweet spots and, and lingering hitboxes and stuff like that with weaker attacks. Um, or with weaker hits, that's not a bad thing. But then the way that people responded defend defensively is saying, well, I'm in shield, but I got these really great defensive options. I can roll, which is super annoying sometimes. Uh, so, so out of the shield, I can roll forward or roll back. And you'll never know which roll I'm doing because I can just tap a direction and do either. I can do two in a row, three in a row, and it's kind of hard to track. Um, rolls are also not that easy to um, react to because there's not like a really sharp sound effect that goes, bing! I'm rolling like there is with uh, Fox's Illusion with the side B or Sheik's Bouncing Fish where they really that, and Charizard's Flare Blitz they have like a ping that you can react to and that helps but this that sound effect is not sharp and it gets drowned out in the soundscape and there's no flashy visual effect really so your reactions are going to be trailing just trying to track the extreme left right movement that you see or the spot dodge that already makes rolling annoying and effective, but the fact that these things don't decay, again, Sakurai wants to design a game where these things don't decay at all, which is a good philosophy, except for we played so many smashes and this is a problem. This is a problem online, this can be a problem offline, just spamming uh, spot dodge over and over is annoying. Let's see if the computer can do that. Yeah, Computers are cheap. Yeah, it's not easy for a computer to deal with either. Because it's not just a matter of like knowing he's going to spot dodge. Smash is, is a game design where the startup frames for all the attacks vary. And sometimes you have a decent attack, but it's not that fast. And the window to hit a spot dodge is pretty, it's pretty small. And your ground moves active frames are also pretty small. Like Mario's forward tilt is only active for two frames. Well, like if you're trying to hit like a... <laughs> A fast moving target with just like such a small window like that, you're probably gonna miss. And that's not a fun feeling to be like, I know all you're gonna do is sit there and spam, and even when I react to it, I can't hit it. So that's just like a, a tuning issue, right? Aerial moves have tons of active frames for whatever reason. Or the reason is because moving targets are so much harder to hit. If you try to hit something in the air without a lot of active frames, you're gonna likely miss because it's just a really it's a much more complicated timing challenge, which I'll show you here. I'll show you what I mean right here. So, you know, we use the Descartes system uh, for measuring skill and uh, timing wise, the static timings, which are the things that are never going to change or repeated rhythms that are just on like a metronome. Uh, the external timing is basically seeing it and extrapolating the timing event for it. Oh, you can't even see that. There we go. Can I zoom in? There we go. Not that far. There we go. 
Okay, so static timing is just set rhythms. External timing is seeing a, uh, something coming and going, it's gonna get here in 0.2 seconds because I can kind of feel the distance traveling at me. Um, but there's a whole category here for complex timing. And this involves anything that like accelerates and decelerates or changes tempo or, or moves relative to something else. It, it's a whole big category. But uh, basically characters jumping around and because gravity affects their movement in an arc and they can you know control their horizontal position left and right, just hitting another target in the air is actually pretty hard in um, Smash in general. So that's a skill a lot of people have to learn. Uh, if you want to test that, you know, just watch a beginning player play Smash and they, they won't be able to coordinate like independently moving and attacking. Uh, if you want to test it yourself, you can just put the computer on jump and notice that his different timings and his different um, ways he fastballs. Just try to hit him with like a fireball as he lands. That's the challenge. And you'll see that like just based on all the different ways he can be in the air and I can be in the air, it's really hard to make him land on a fireball. There's more ways to miss it. So that's just a little thing you can do to yourself. It's just demonstrating how complex the timing systems are and, and the timing situations are in Smash. Uh, to get back to the, the topic here. And the drawing. Because dodging is so annoying, because players are kind of, well, well, players will opt to dodge instead of trying to engage in all this complexity, right? Players don't really have a good sense of their frame data. They don't really know when they're, you know, at a negative, when the opponent's negative four versus negative six and what that means. Um, sometimes they just pick an option to do and just hope for the best, like a shield grab, a drop shield jab or something. But for the most part, playing in and around the shield is just big, like, nebulous zone for a lot of players and the kind of study and specific data you need uh, to, to to understand that frame data world is something that almost every player in uh, Smash doesn't have like a strong grasp of. If your opponent is Pac-Man, how is he going to grab you? <laughs> you can't. Pac-Man has the worst grab in the game. So players opt to roll, they opt to dash away, they opt for movement to try to beat the offensive option. They don't try to engage it directly, that's why you don't see a lot of perfect shields. People don't hold their ground and smash and anticipate an incoming attack and perfectly counterattack it with their own perfectly timed thing. They rather play a lot more general, they like to use their movement and just general conditioning and mix-ups to work their opponent over. And there's not a lot of specific, like really tight... Um, math for lack of a better word going on there so what you can do in smash or so how that affects the smash is we'll opt for movement uh where's my curly do i have like a free line scribble yeah so people will opt to move though like go in and out where's my line color option they'll like go forward they'll go back they'll jump on the platform they'll empty hop you know, one time jumping empty and then dashing in was like the, a big thing for the meta. It's a little bit less so now. And they'll do all this movement just to try to make themselves harder to hit and their opponent uh, maybe will foolishly attack some place that you're not going to be and then you can counterattack on reaction. Um, we play like this because the systems sort of encourage this in the first place. Uh, like, we don't necessarily want to play like this, but being beaten down from general offense for so long you'll lose the habit or you'll just lose matches so we can start thinking about smash in a way that says like how do we encourage specific things to happen in specific areas and um let me type this out so this is like a platform this is ground to ground This is air to ground, like this little region right here. This platform should be higher, air to ground, compared to how big these characters are, it's funny. This should be higher. There we go, it looks better. Uh, this zone right here is air to ground, and this, we'll just call this zone off the edge, general edge guarding. Let's just expand the canvas, do this, and this, everything that happens on the ledge, let's call it edge guard. That's fine. And of course, air to air. Why not? It's all the way up here. Okay, so what we want to do in general, let's see if you can select all these. Font 24. 
one thing we want to consider is okay how do these different areas flow into each other and why <laughs> so like if somebody's in the shield why can't why doesn't that make you super happy when your opponent's in shield right so normally when a game is uh, of more traditional fighters or whatever they have like very specific things you can do like oh grabs and street fighter break shield and we know that's the same with smash but otherwise like this move is good on shield this move is good on shield and they kind of have a category of all these very specific things that they know are good and work um, there's no move in Smash other than grab and a few shield breaker moves that you want you want your opponent to be in shield for. Um, and another reason why is because your mix-ups, even if you have these really cool mix-ups, let me show you. Uh, stop. Even if you have really cool mix-ups, like where you back air close to your, their body and then you can cross through them, right? So even if they shield, you know, they'll be on the other side and they'll whiff and then you can attack them. Even if you have cool mix-ups like that, they have to actually bite. They actually have to shield grab in order for it to be effective. And a lot of times, once people get tricked enough for not knowing, they're just going to opt for the safer, uh, more evasive options all the time. So that's annoying. And we, if you want people to do more things in a specific area, you got to consider like what their tendencies are and what they're afraid of and how you're communicating how the game works. Uh, so let's see. So this is how the parts of Smash flow together, right? Uh, currently... Tilts are not very good. This is we're just gonna do this for Smash 4 because I don't have too much time. Smash 4. Yeah, thanks for not uh, doing all the text. Cool. So the way Smash 4 is currently designed is there are certain timing windows that moves are tuned for that just kind of fit together almost like puzzle pieces. And this is a really cool way to think about it. Um, tilts on the ground. Down tilts are generally faster than forward tilts for all characters. Up tilts are generally more meaty. They have more active frames than the other tilts for all characters. So when you're thinking about the pros and cons of these moves, you should probably be like, oh, interesting. If I want to poke someone but then recover faster in case they try to counterattack me, I should use a down tilt. Uh, and the cool thing about down tilt is, I don't know why it's so choppy. I just don't understand. You know, not necessarily a lot of range. But the down tilt is the move that's easiest to jump over because it's so close to the ground or a step over if you have a particular attack that kind of like steps over that area and it attacks like the other person's nose. So if somebody tried to down tilt Mario right here, if I angle forward tilt, it actually changes how hard it is it, how hard it is for them to hit me, right? Because I'm doing this like cold axe kick kind of thing and they're trying to hit my toes but my toes are actually moving away from them. That's the kind of stuff you want to see more of. Uh, but tilts, four tilts about the same frame data as rolling, which is not good. <laughs> what happens is if somebody invests in a four tilt, that move is not very good, especially with Mario, right? And four tilt wraps up entirely in 30 frames. So on the 30th frame, Mario can do something after forward tilting. 31st frame, actually. Um, and his up tilt's almost the same way, same timing wise. Like you see how these timing windows are almost all the same, 31, 30, 28. This means all of Mario's tilts are like all the same kind of uh, timing window. We'll consider this in a chunk. His roll wraps up and he can recover on frame 30, on frame 30, and spot dodge on 27, still in the same range. So if two players do these evasive moves at the same time, uh, and, they're, and they're both you know dis balanced similarly to Mario, they'll recover at exactly the same time. Unfortunately, rolls are things that people do preemptively. So if they if they roll like slightly before your forward tilt, in the 30 frames or so when they're invincible, they're just looking only at you. And if they see you sticking out your leg or tilting for whatever reason, they actually probably will come out of this exchange with a frame advantage. They'll be recovering just a few frames faster than this with these annoyingly evasive moves, right? Um, and then they can just like attack you from the back. They can grab you, they can jab you, they can do annoying things like that. So really, forward tilt almost has no positive benefits, especially for Mario, he has like no range. So why would I wanna risk somebody rolling in on me and then them getting the advantage when all I was trying to do was like hit them in the chin like that? Like that's really not that big of a deal. So I think that's too much risk for how much, how little reward you get. 
and that will discourage me from using tilts, right? Another thing why it's hard to use tilts is you can't do it out of a dash unless you do the slow run technique, which is hard for people. That's why nobody does it. And they don't have a lot of range because you can't adjust them after you do them. So like with aerials, you can be like, oh, I just need to adjust and you move forward. Tilts, you can't. Um, in general, aerials all recover faster on the ground like this than tilts do. Eh, 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 eh. It's much faster, right? So that's just an, another way of saying a lot of air moves give you a lot of versatility both in movement and movement's really good in a game like Smash Brothers. Movement uh, and speed. So like that's why a lot of people don't want to stick to the ground. It's not like all these ground moves can um, start these massive combos. So people are like, I want to get a combo started on the ground, but I have to go in the air to get it to work. A lot of combos start off with aerials, right? Jump-ins are hard to get because people are moving and jump-ins are pretty lucrative in Smash. So if you look at the timing windows, Smashes are even slower than tilts. So if somebody rolls against your Smash, they have plenty of time to counter Smash you. And that's not the worst thing in the world, I want to say. Mario's forward smash recovers in 48 frames. That means if they roll and you forward smash at the same time, they have 18 extra frames to go, ha, what a fool. What move should I want to do? My forward smash that comes down to frame 15, which I can do because I will have three frames to spare. Do I want to do a down smash that comes down to frame five? Uh, am I in range of it? Should I walk a few frames forward? Like, that's just annoying, right? They use one of their most evasive moves that are is still relatively hard to react to, and then you try to do one of your highest risk, highest reward moves, and you get countered. But that's the reason why smashes should be high risk, because you're supposed to, you're going for like a high damage, high kill move, and you want the risk to be appropriate. But here's what I don't like about Smash. If they hit your shield, they can also counter you on reaction from your smash. So that's super annoying. Like, if you want to get me, if you actually think I'm going to do a smash, you need to do a spot dodge or a roll to get around it. Um, and that should be, like, your best counter. Like, I got you, and you roll through, and they pick the wrong smash. Like, they pick forward smash, and you roll through, and they did a, they did an up, uh, they did a forward smash, and you roll through. That should be the only way to counter somebody. No, Donkey Kong, please. Let's see if Donkey Kong can do it. See, I almost forward smashed him from rolling ahead of time of forward tilt. That's really annoying. See that? I rolled his down smash and then I got behind him and I tried to smash. See, see that should be your reward. Doing that on shield, holding your shield is one of the most like easiest defensive things you can do. So they shouldn't give your opponent a way to easily counter you on reaction after they smash your shield. Your reward for using your shield should be taking no damage, not getting a smash in return. That's very, very discouraging. And there's only two ways to fix that problem. You can make smashes safe on shield just with an arbitrary rule like all smashes, which is not necessarily what we're looking for for all the reasons we explained above. You can make all moves safer on shield, which is what we experimented with, with early in the stream, which is, it works. I mean, it's not, it actually felt pretty good, uh, kind of extreme, kind of took a little getting used to. Being able to destroy someone to shield in two hits is kind of scary, but hey, uh, that's a thing. Uh, but the other thing you can do is speed up the recovery frames of smash attacks. So let's look, let's look at this again. Mario's smash attack, after it attacks on frame 15 and has like two active frames, has freaking almost 30. Almost 30 frames of just him like pulling his arms back. So like, okay, I bet we don't make it 30 because 30 is in the same sort of timing block as these rolls and stuff. Let's make it 15, right? Uh, and that means, so here's what that would fix. I'll show you this Donkey Kong matchup. So let's say I'm never gonna shield his move and retaliate based on what I shielded. I'm just gonna use movement. When you use movement, sometimes you, you move all the way out of your way, right? To, to avoid the attack. So you're like dashing away. And that's kind of annoying because catching someone who can run away from you that fast is like hard to deal with, but that's why we have edges and platforms and smash and it's, it's only part of the problem. So if I get out of DK's way, I shouldn't be able to necessarily counterattack him in time, right? Because I dashed out of the way. So like I, if I wanted to counterattack him, I should be able to walk out of the way. Walking slower takes more skill, takes more prediction, takes more accuracy, and therefore that's when I should be able to earn my counterattack by precisely, yeah, moving out of the way just like that. 
like that. That's what you want. You don't want people using their best escape option and getting the best rewards for it. That's what we call low risk, high reward. And that's usually what drives metagames and, and, and strategies away from like engagement. It's what drives people away from in, uh, thinking about all their options and weighing the risk reward and just going, well, first I got to do this because obviously this. First I got to do this because obviously that. That like pigeonholes the strategy space too easily. So that's why I kind of don't like dash dancing either. Like in Smash, in Smash 4, you can use this U-turn technique. It gets you out of the way, but costs you a little bit of time for that extreme movement that you did. But it's, you can still counterattack just based on the natural timings of things like this. Right there, I did an auto cancel back air into a jab to counter him. Like, there's all these just minute timing differences I'm negotiating to get my advantage. It's not just a freebie. I don't just get a jump aerial and then all of a sudden there's nothing you can do no matter what, which is kind of what we saw when I upped the damage early in the stream. Like, you don't want to give players freebies. You want to make, it, make sure that every sort of way they can attack the shield has different pros and cons. If you go deep, that's certain pros and cons. When you barely nick the shield and, and fade away, certain pros and cons. Same with attacking. And that's really what makes your game more rich strategy-wise, right? When there's a lot more medium risk, medium reward, and like low risk, low reward, things that you will go for instead of just trying to be super safe all the time and not being able to get your opponent when you want to. And you can still you can still dash out of the out of way and back in. It's just super hard, right? That's why perfect pivoting is kind of cool. Kind of hard to do. I'm kind of glad it's out. But dash dancing kind of messes with this balance, right? If you can dash fully out of the way and dash fully back in their face, like in an instant, then there's almost no drawback and there's almost no commitment to even moving out of the way in the first place. And I'd rather have the characters experience a, a smoother spectrum of risk versus their distance instead of a very binary uh, or a much smaller spectrum of if I dash away, everything's good and then I can work it out from there. It's a little bit of an exaggeration, but it still, it fits the point. So let's go back to the chart. So when we trace player habits and why they try to escape pressure and why they felt like they were in pressure and why they're not encouraged to, to, to go offensive in certain situations, uh, we can really examine like, okay, it was probably because of a lack of knowledge, too much complexity, and maybe too strong of options here. It's amazing how weakening options in a place can make other options shine. That's why it's called balance, right? I mean, should, it should be obvious, but a lot of people don't think about that when they make suggestions to Smash. Like, just buff my character. Just give me lower landing lag. Like, I don't think you're understanding how everything fits together. You're not even considering it, let alone understand it. Um, changing the way the shield works and feeling like you have to hold your ground and and being able to semi-react to situations, not fully react, not just be like, oh, he smashed my shield, what an idiot, let me go ahead and do my easy response, but semi-react, we're like, oh, was that the opportunity? Okay, or maybe not, like, and you're on the cusp of your reactions, that's kind of what you want. You want a, a more wide spectrum uh, of situations. So, let me see, text. So let's just say that when you encourage one area, you encourage the other. And Smash 4, the way people sort of dance around and use burst options, like try to dash grab you or um, jump attack and go around you and kind of dance around the area instead of directly attacking the opponent, it's neat and all, but I'd rather have... I think that whole strategy and that whole playstyle develop because people are not confident in directly attacking to people's shields. And they're not confident that that gameplay interaction will be consistent, and they're not confident that the gameplay interaction will be rewarding for them. Uh, so, by changing shield, or so Smash 4 is just like strong shields lead to less confident. And offense, which leads to more confident movement, which makes it harder for ground moves entirely. So with the suggestion, and hopefully for Smash Ultimate, what we're seeing, weaker shields, there's like two ways to weak, weaken shields. You can either make them recover less fast, which is I think that's a much cooler way for Smash 4 to be interesting. Sure, you can do a little bit of damage of their shield over time, 
But if you, um, if the whole shield regenerated less quickly, or maybe only regenerates at its current speed when you stay on the ground, but if you jump in the air or roll or whatever, it's, it regenerates super slow. And you're like, oh no, those few hits I got like 15 seconds ago before I started jumping around like an idiot, like that's still costing me. And when I land, I'm gonna have a smaller shield. And when I have a smaller shield, I'll show you. I have to guess. I have to guess sort of where, the, like look how small my shield can get. Like, let's say it was this small all the time. I had to, like, angle it, right? And, like, guess where the attack's going to come in. And then the smaller your shield, the more likely you're going to get your shield to break. And I think that would be pretty exciting to see um, a turtler get their shield broken just due to the natural balance of the game instead of a turtler getting a chance to roll around like crazy and then retreat to the ledge and then jump around a few times and then basically get their max shield back. Like, I don't like that. So this is what I mean by the different areas of Smash need to flow into each other. Uh, because there's all these different games of Smash, these strategic areas, let's see, weaker shields lead to more confident, more offense, which leads to more res more offensive responses. Because you can respond to offense. It's much harder to respond to movement, more, which leads to more ground moves being used, right? Because if some of your fastest options are ground moves instead of jumping, because uh, as you can see here, jumping in the air and doing an immediate attack takes about 40 frames to do like, like this. It takes about 40 frames, 30 frames, or whatever to wrap up. But if you just stay on the ground and jab, it's already wrapped up, right? So balance-wise, Jumping and attacking should be slower than staying on the ground and attacking. Landing and attacking should be faster than staying on the ground and attacking. That'd be a, like a nice, simple way to understand the uh, relative pros and cons of this design space. So instead of letting players run away to a different game, like you see people platform camping Little Mac and Kirby, you see Bales retreating to the ledge to get around their landing lag uh, penalty, and you're like, this is not good. Like. You shouldn't be able to escape the pressure of one just by running to the other. That's just, it's aggravating to players, especially if they're only like good at two or three of these and not all five. It's aggravating. It can draw out matches. Um, and it could put more stress on players' uh, diversity of characters and skill than you might realize. So if you get good at one thing and it semi-pressures the others, and then it flows back into itself and the consequences of one area kind of transfer to the next. Like if you do a bad air to air, you're gonna land on a platform. And then, like I said before, platforms are dangerous because you're closer to the blast zone. So if you fail here, you should be in danger here. If you uh, do an air to ground approach, it can transfer into a ground to ground or it should transfer and swap places to where the other player's in the air and you're on the ground. That's a cool trade of position, but eventually trying to hit each other Air to ground should naturally transfer to ground to ground. And to escape the pressures of shielding and weaken shields and all that from ground to ground, you should want to go back either into the air or onto a platform or here. But again, this flows back down, right? You don't want to just to camp up here and almost have no way to get them down. You don't want the players to just jump all the time and have no way to sort of uh, chase them down, right? From the air. You don't want the whole game to be like, get back here, Jigglypuff. Get back here, Bayonetta. When are you going to return to the stage? You want these to have natural consequences that get it closer and closer. And anywhere anywhere you see the word ground, whether it's in the platform, it's basically a ground. Um, anywhere you see the word, is that air? That looks so weird. Anywhere you see the word ground, um, you could also consider platform to be a ground. And then all of a sudden you see like, oh, having a ground game in Smash would be beneficial because it comes in handy in three out of the four, three out of the five situations here. Like, oh, and then because you're on the ground, you can experience both air moves, ground moves, shields, spot dodging, rollings. Almost all your options are here, which means this should be the most interesting strategic space. Uh, something that involves the ground. <laughs> And an extension of air to air goes to edge guarding because you can go off the stage and get them. So like that's why this is over here. And that's really how Smash should flow. Uh, I have a really cool example of this. Hopefully I can show you. Let me see if I can get it working. Let me just go ahead and uh, punch this, hit this button, and go over here. 
So like obviously this is my opinion and this is a type of design, it's a, it's a type of balance that I would like to see more and when given the chance to work on my own Smash Brothers inspired fighting game, this is exactly where I pushed the design. I said you shouldn't be able to escape situations because escaping is fun for no one but having consequences and knowing what these consequences are is fun for everyone. And a lot of people don't, wouldn't say that because a lot of people aren't saying that. Um, basically when they when they make suggestions but check this out uh lesson lessons let me just go here okay so ignoring the opponent real quick this is a bar bar ball it's a game on sports friends and this is the game i worked on and made i'm a little green dude right now and basically this quit hitting me <laughs> you have no shields in this game you have rolls and spot dodges like that you have air dashes that are invisible too but you have no shields so a lot of the pressure comes from your ability to counterattack with your attacks. And we had a whole stream of the clashing system, but what I want to show you is you have seven jumps in this game. Right now, you only have five. Every time you jump, you see the little circles getting smaller and smaller. Well, now you know I have one jump. You're like, what am I going to do? Can I get back to the stage? Or can I? will I drown in the water, right? Do I have enough energy to get out? Like, that's the kind of clear risk reward that you want to see more in your game but check this out if i'm super evasive on the ground and then i'm super evasive in the air every time the more evasive i am i'm starting to lose jumps you're like this guy can't do this forever you're right and when i'm on the ground and i'm rolling see i'm not getting my jumps back very slowly just like i said with the smash example that means if you just keep pressuring me i'm gonna have even less resources but look how fast they come back when i when i don't when i don't do anything de -de 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 -de. that's fast right um, so yeah, this is what I mean by having the consequences of one zone flow into the other. You can exert your offensive and superior skill in one area, but not have to just all go into a wash when they just leave or run away or camp. Um, and here's the other cool thing. When you run out of jumps, in this game, hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me. Trying to get him to hit me when I'm red. He's dumb. What a bad AI. <laughs> well, if he hits me, I'll, I'll do the other training mode to, to demonstrate that. How do I get out of this? Oh, that's good enough. So when you, when, you, when you get hit in that flashing state, it's called a break, and your knockback is basically multiplied by like three or four, and you just go flying. It's not the end of the world, like you can still recover, it's very hard, but that just increases the drama that you see from like certain parts of the strategy game to other parts, and that's what, that's why I'm suggesting for Smash, because I know it works. I designed it, like that's, it, it works, it's super fun. It's super clean too, right? So this, that's what I mean by how the parts of Smash flow into each other. By changing certain parts, you make other parts like you know, more prominent, more uh, rewarding, more incentivized, and that's a really good way to understand some of the changes that I'm suggesting for Smash. There's Bar Bar Ball. Um, so again, speed and laning lag are only part of the equation, not features in themselves. Uh, you don't just be like, made the game fast. Like, you want the game to be interesting. You want the game to be tense. You want the game to have back and forth. You want the game to not to be balanced in like terms of character diversity, but also play styles. Like, those are the goals. Now, you might tweak any of these things in the process to get it to happen, but like I said in the stream, um, having increased shield pressure, which is pretty much like melee shields are pretty bad, and icons, you know, it feels like shields are pretty weak, which is good because you have all these other methods to dodge. It's perfectly fine. One super simple defensive option, other a little bit riskier and a little bit more rewarding option. You don't need the shields to be both low risk and high reward. Uh, it just, you know, bends everything out of proportion. Likewise, you don't need offense to be super fast. Uh, you don't need to be mind-numbingly safe, right? Like I'll show you here in um, Smash. I think the lane and lag for all the attacks in Smash are really well tuned. This neutral layer is 10, so you can like pretty much just do bam to bam, right? Like bam to bam. And even though the shields might be a little annoying to get around, like lane and lag-wise, you can do so much with this current... Um, the way it's currently tuned. It doesn't need to be any faster. But the more important thing about speed is how do the air moves encourage and support the ground moves so that they're both viable and interesting in their own way. Um, that's what's important. And right now ground moves are a little slow and a little weak. 
But the cool part about up tilt is it has more active frames, this has more recovery time, and this has more reach horizontal. So like pros and cons are right there. You don't want your aerials to be like, well, these are just the only thing you want to use and it recovers so fast, why do ground move? Except for the occasional hit. Like that's not what you want. To encourage a healthy ground game, you want the aerial aerial game not to be too strong, basically. So this is one of my, one of my favorite combos. It's like back air into S smash. And if you do it like really deep, you can actually combo these two things. So like do you really need the game to be even more lane, less lane-like than this when you can combo back air and F-Smash? I don't think so. Yeah. Look at how crazy is that? Oh, 46 damage just because I'm still on the, the augmented uh, Mario, so ignore that. But this basic idea here is really cool. And there's lots of ways that the moves fit in um, in these very interesting and very um, specific percentage windows. And maybe the windows are too small because of the the opportunities are too like too fine. Maybe you want a a uh, a combo space where it's more easy to do your combos across a wider group of percentages, so you're not there looking at your spreadsheet before every matchup to try to figure out what's up. But in general, I'm not a fan of just decreasing the landing lag from what we already see in Smash Four. We already talked about the shield pressure and the equipment mod combo variety. We just kind of talked about. Um, yeah, everything is tied together through damage. I already explained that. Custom moves. Custom moves are interesting in Smash 4 um, because making an entire character is super expensive. You have to like get the model, get the sound, carve out their unique trophies, make sure that they have their own place in the all-star and the single player. And then you have to you know, design their moveset, animate everything, which is like 50 moves per characters. Lots of minute animations that are kind of uh, hard to remember, or like that don't come to mind, but they, they're really important. You have to design their costumes, and you have to design maybe a stage for them, and then yeah, that, that's a ton of work. Especially if you're getting a third party, you gotta go through all this legal junk. So it's much easier to design a few more moves for the characters that you have than special or a whole another character. And especially when it's about tweaking the moves. Especially, so custom moves are kind of interesting in that way, in that regard. Um, we actually played with them in tournament for a while. The unfortunate part is a lot of Smash is too complex and the setup is too... Uh, cumbersome and unintuitive for both players and tournament organizers that these features were just a pain a pain to try to get to work like does everyone have the right custom uh, moves we're gonna build default custom sets that you have to look at on the internet and build so that everyone knows that they can expect these specific custom characters does everybody have all the custom moves because getting them is really annoying and then do we have a way of unlocking them all maybe we'll use a an action replay for the 3DS and upload the builds to the Wii U. It's going to take like 15 minutes per Wii U or whatever. And if you're running a whole tournament with like 30 Wii U's to 50, that's like a ton of time and it was annoying. We tried it though, we fought through it, and then we just realized that custom moves are not. They're not nearly as balanced as the default moves, which is sad because then it puts the pressure on the community, right? Uh, like, what are we going to balance? Which specific moves we're going to ban? And since we're not really comfortable banning anything except for freaking stages <laughs> then it's kind of unfortunate so this, this is what I mean by the custom moves with the fireball oh my gosh I have none on the Wii U I have them all on my 3DS again case in point why this is so terrible um, and the fact that we had to unlock them all on the 3DS and then didn't get like an instant unlock on the Wii U, like they're the same game. These are the same games. So I'll test this one. So this one has fast fireball. Does less damage, goes horizontal really fast, does an arc. So a lot of people use this as this like little spam, spam keep away. And sure, that's a different play style from Mario. This is Scalding Flood. It does damage instead of just pushing people. One of my favorite parts about Scalding Flood is you can combo into an F-Smash if you just jump into them and then react and hit that. Another cool way to combo into F-Smash. Like, that's cool. Um, Gust Cape. People thought it was just easier to edgeguard because you just blow people away. This is a little extreme. And a lot of these functionalities sort of to in encroach on each other because some seem to be just better than others, even though they probably aren't. Uh, and so on and so forth. Like, there's a whole variety of of custom moves. 
So while Sonic and DK and other characters like Palutena and even Duck Hunt had some pretty broken ones, some other characters were pretty interesting to try to get to work, but it was just too much. Uh, interesting idea. The community may, um, you know, if Smash for Wii U was the last Smash game on the planet, I could see the community picking up some more of those custom moves over time just to inject some more variety into their into their meta. But I'd rather have all that energy, no matter how much how much less it is to make custom moves in a character, put entirely on making new characters and stages and, and features. That's just my that's just me. We have a whole video series on option selects if you're curious. Um, the reason why nobody does them is they don't understand them because they're really hard to understand. But the other reason is why, because the ground game in Smash is not very um, encouraged. So option selects would be even harder to set up. Um, since so much of what Smash's meta is revolves around its movement, um, sort of empty and non-directed movement, then it's even harder to predict when your opponent's going to attack because they're attacking that much less. But they work. People use them. I use them. I was doing them on stream earlier with my perfect shield responses to Ike's neutral air. Pretty cool stuff. Even when you increase the damage in the game and increase shield stun, the perfect shielding that's a part of many option selects retains its functionality. Um, Dacus was just a technique from Brawl. Dash attack, cancel, up smash. So those are all the letters, D-A-C-U-S. Um, Sheik, Falco, Snake. They had really good ones. Other characters, not so much. Pit had a pretty slidey one, but his up smash was not so good. Um, so really, it was just a thing. It was kind of in Smash 3DS in the very early patches, and then they patched it out. Uh, so, goodbye. Meteor canceling in Melee was just dumb. Um, there's only a few spikes in Melee where you can't Meteor cancel. Otherwise, you can just like hit jump or up B to bust out of it. Just the spiking fast fall, you just bust out of it with like almost no consequences. Uh, you can almost recover faster than the person who hit you with the attack in the first place. So it's just an idea. Like you could tell the idea was, oh, nobody wants to be spiked. So if you do the skill-based timing thing, you can get out of it. One, spikes are rare. Most of the time players spend their time on the stage. And then most of the time players don't aren't in a position to set up a spike when they go off the stage. So spikes are already rare. But then you made it to where even if you land one, they can just cancel it by mashing a button. The window was far too big. It was far too easy. There was no consequence for going for it. Um, a lot of spikes and moves in Smash are easy to react to because when you're below someone, they can only have one move to hit you with. So like, if they land it, you're already ready to meteor cancel. Just bad. Uh, a lot of Kirby's down arrows, Foxes would just break it and come back, break it and come back. No matter how many times I spiked them, tried to drive them down. So this is just a perfect example of not everything, not having options all the time is, having more options all the time is not always good. Having counters to stuff is not always good. Sometimes as a designer, you just want the game to reach a conclusion. After getting X amount of advantages, you want that player to, to, to retain those advantages and, and net their benefits. You don't want it to be like, oh, I did a weird thing and I hit a button and now you know most of that hard work you did is canceled. You don't want something like this in your game. I'm glad it's gone. Uh, wave dashing, I think I already commented on it, but it's not my... It was neat for its time, but it's not my favorite style of movement, and I don't like universal movement like this in games. I'd rather have character-specific movement and everything else just being very, fairly basic. Uh, I think the air dodging system in Smash Ultimate is the best. I'm not liking... Or Smash Wii U. I'm not liking Smash Ultimate's air dodging system, but at least it retains partial... Smash 4 air dodge, when you don't touch a direction in your air dodge, apparently that achieves a similar effect. Um, but again, like I said with dash dancing, the rapid movement is not... It, I, of course, so in, in, a, in a short term, yes, it feels good. It's neat because you're like moving really fast. But you're like, what are you sacrificing to do that, right? That's the whole point. You want to reward people for very precise, minute movement, not extreme rapid movement that pretty much becomes like the de facto way to move around, right? You want people to be walking and like medium running and putting themselves in very specific places, using air DI to very precisely land their attacks instead of just using course control and just digitally dashing around. Same with the um, directional air dodge that's in Smash Ultimate now. I've seen characters dash, jump in one direction, then hard reverse direction in midair. Like that looks stupid. Like, we grew up on platformers. Momentum is a thing. And fortunately, there's some kind of landing lag penalty for doing that in Smash Ultimate. But, like, 
to rapidly change your direction like that seems like it just seems so counterintuitive and would not necessarily add much uh, to the game. It would just make it to where it's even harder to chase someone down, even harder to predict where they're going to land. And it's already hard to predict where people land. Mewtwo's and, and Sheik's with bouncing fishes. Again, character-specific movement. Mewtwo with his confusion. Yeah, confusion and all those weird ways he likes to float around and left and right. Like, it's already highly varied and hard to track someone down that you don't need another one on top of that that's universal. I'm just not a fan. The multi-air dodging system is... Like, you, you, don't, you don't even need a multiple air dodge in Smash 4. Like, you could just have one. But really, I think multiple air dodging is cooler because if you can trap someone twice and then they land on the platform, again, that landing lag, because the platform's hired off to the ground, will net you a benefit for being aggressive. So I love the Smash 4 style air dodge. We'll see what happens with Smash Ultimate. Uh, Smash as an eSport has been interesting. We've come a long way. We're really grassroots. We still are mostly about our own selves and our own community. Sponsors have come in, kind of growing up a little bit. Our tournaments and our production values and our ability to coordinate globally um, is, is, is improving. <laughs> a lot of us Smashers are growing up, getting degrees, and then returning to Smash to apply uh, what we learn. 2GG, shout outs to them and all the cool, hard people working there to make all of what they do over there a success. Um, I have no qualms about Smash as an eSport. I think it's, I, if I were Nintendo, I would find it very tricky to even come up with ideas on how to assist or step in or have a presence in the current uh, way the Smash community is going. So I don't blame them for just basically supporting tournaments with um, advertising sponsorships and not taking down Smash videos online, like stuff like that. Like I think a soft hand is probably the best. Overall, I'd rather see more different tournaments with more different stages and different character bands or different events. Smash is such a huge game. Everything doesn't have to be like just 1v1s and just teams, right? We even experimented with 4v4s back in the early days of Smash Wii U. It's not a competitive mode. Don't do it. <laughs> but I'd like to see more experimentation when the new game comes out. Somebody asked about tournament organize, organizing and chat moderating. Um... Smash skews young, which means that there's a lot of kiddos out there, um, and a lot of them have yet to learn how to be a responsible and productive uh, member of society, like a grown-up or an adult or whatever, and they'll say some pretty crazy things online and act pretty crazy. Sometimes they do a few crazy things in person. For the most part, when you get in person, a, a lot of these kids sort of get with the program. But we've had issues in our community, as many others have, of language and discrimination and things like that. Tournament organizers have tried different things like a stream-only chat or disabling chat. Um, and just keeping the community in mind. It's really difficult. These are social and community problems. And how they intersect with Smash is always hard. Uh, whole tournament organizers have band together to sort of ban whole players from tournament scenes when crazy things have happened like in the tournament or very near the tournament or because of tournament attendees so like again as the community grows up and we get more professional these kinds of things are expected and being able to pick the right option for our community is something that's probably going to come from within instead of from outside tournament setup like i said before with custom moves was it's just really terrible uh, having to put in your custom controls every time by exiting and, and punching it in. I'd rather have that on the character select screen. It'd be so much more convenient. Selecting your stage now in Smash Ultimate before your character is a good idea. I can't believe it took so long to get that. Uh, people don't want to just be anywhere when they're any character. They want to be a place they know they won't just fall off the edge and die. <laughs> like It's important for making them comfortable with the choices that they make. Uh, character select screen, name tags. I like the name tags. There's really no, nothing I want to say about that. But setting this all up can be a bother. I wish I don't know what some magical solution is. Maybe when you're going to a tournament, you register online, and then all the switches or something can just like download the data, or or maybe when you bring your switch in with your with your Joy-Con or something, you just like slide in, slide out, and it has your data. I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. I just want a better solution. Um. 
how would I approach Smash single player? I think, like I said before, Smash single player is very, um, very carved out of just normal Smash Brothers stage-based gameplay. And while Subspace Emissary was emissary, interesting, and I think I uh, did a lot of things well enough, I would design a Smash single player more like how what we see with Break the Targets and Board the Platform and stuff, mini games. And I would make these mini games themed uh, kind of like what you see with WarioWare or Rhythm Heaven um, for a basic idea like let's say uh, let me see like let's say so board the platforms what just happened okay Board the Platforms is a movement-based minigame that accentuates and tests the player's ability to move with a character. Break the Targets is a, a kind of a generic attacking-based game that it challenges people to attack with the character and move in certain ways. But you can go even further and just have a whole minigame built around a, sp a specific attack. Um, I'll show you an example. Like imagine there was a minigame instead of the sandbag being here. Uh, what if it's just like these giant heads on the left and the right uh, side of Pac-Man and they're moving up and down? And then the heads are like, feed me an orange. Like, oh, cool, double jump, charge orange, throw it in the mouth. And like, feed me a cherry. Like, that's a quick one. You throw it down. And you're trying to just learn about all the different arcs of Pac-Man's um, fruits while adjusting your height and feeding them and trying to get the food in as quickly as possible. Uh, like, let's say that was just a simple mini game. Like, that's a very Pac-Man specific thing. No other character should have something where they're feeding people fruit because only Pac-Man has fruit. And um, you could really make it interesting because Smash is interesting and like take away the floor and see how long Pac-Man can like do it um, or maybe he only every time he jumps the floor goes away and he's got to figure out how to stall and hover and then jump and charge and get the right food at the right time like you can make it as challenging as you want and as interesting as you want but move basically moving far away from just brawling AI targets is where I would move Smash single player I would give the creators you know my team enough flexibility to see any move or any setup and be like how can we turn this into an interesting mini game? And being a mini game, it wouldn't need to necessarily be scoped out for like a large experience for other characters because it's very character specific. That'd be a good way to really bring a lot of freshness into the game because WarioWare is secretly one of the best games ever and modeling its unique take on rapid fire challenges is something more developers should do. So that's how I would design Smash the single player. Here's another cool question. Uh, how would Smash translate oops, to 3D? What a good question, because you know 3D is the future, right? Eh, actually, 2D is good for 2D things, and 3D is good for 3D things. Uh, I've written many articles about this. Um, so if you want to check that out, I can link that later. Um, so when you move a game to 3D, it can't be any easy decision. You don't take that, you don't do that lightly, right? You have to know what the pros and cons are, and then everything has to be redesigned. Um, let's go ahead and ch look at this dude. Commit to nope. Uh, so I thought about this for a long time. I've been thinking about translating Smash in 3D since 2007, and I've studied game design since 2000. To them early, earlier than that. So, uh, this is a YouTube channel. Just Googled it. Kirby Blood Blast. This guy's playing it. He's going to talk. Maybe I don't care. Let's just see. Is this a review? I thought it was a Let's Play. Well, it's going to show a lot of footage. So, check this out. This is Kirby Blood Blast. It's a Kirby game with no powers. I thought this game was going to be garbage. I looked at the trailer when it first came out. It's like, nope. And then I realized, I heard that it was seven bucks, and I was like, all right, I'll give it a try. And it became one of my favorite games, favorite Kirby games of all time. Um, the controls are super tight, uh, super good, just like what you might expect from a 2D game, but the game's in 3D. And if you know anything about Sakurai, you know, he made Kirby, he also made Kid Icarus Uprising, and I felt like Kid Icarus Uprising was a 3D game that took a lot of Smash aspects, like, you know, variable analog control, smashing to dash, dash attacks, um, all these other sort of Smash-like things and put them really well into a shooter 3D game. So likewise, this game took the same thing. You actually dash in this game by smashing the stick. It's not quite Smash Brothers-y, but it gets the job done. You walk by barely pressing it. You jump, uh, you have variable height on your jump. And because it's a 3DS game, 
there's this issue that I call bad 3D where it's really hard to judge distances that are like straight into the camera like this, right? So um, with the 3DS 3D effect turned on, that issue is no longer an issue. So no matter where Kirby is in the air, on the ground, around objects, you can see it very clearly. And that's one of the reasons why this game is just so amazing. With that clarity and with those tight controls, the game was able to create, re basically recreate a lot of the tight, interesting, and classic challenges that uh, old school Kirby games were known for. And I was like, this is the perfect base for Smash Brothers. Like, yeah, look, some extractions. You can suck in enemies, and when you're inhaling, your character Kirby plants himself, and you can rotate his, you know, cone of inhale around to aim at people. And then once you inhale something, you can spit out the star, and you're supposed to spit the star into things to combo them <laughs> uh, like that. And if something's flying, you know, you can suck that in and jump and shoot it, or you can l l angle it up and try to get a combo attack. Um, this game has really cool bosses. And some pretty, even though the level design is pretty simple looking, going for platinum medals is, was like super fun. And it was pretty challenging. And the, lot, and the bosses are so well designed. Like, look at that stuff. So this is what I'm talking about. Lightning bolt from the left. Lightning bolt from the back. Eyeball that you're constantly shooting at. And no matter how you jump in the field, like the controls and the, the 3D effect, you can very accurately aim at everything and move very tightly. And then you're like... So normally when this lightning bolt at the bottom of the screen is coming at you in a normal game, you're like, when's it going to get there? When's it going to get there? And you need some kind of like hard shadow or something to like see it properly. But with this game, you don't need it because you have a really good 3D effect. So it's coming in and this Kirby gets hit, but he could have totally jumped that. This game creates 3D obstacles, you know, obstacles that are off the ground, in the air, moving around. And by the time you get to some of the like second phases of the boss battle, this game super shines. So... This is exactly what I want from Smash. Um, you probably have to have each player with their own uh, screen view, which is completely possible with the Switch. I don't know, but Smash has always been a game where everyone gathers around, but like, who cares? The challenges make Smash for 3D, so this is what I'm saying. Um, and what's interesting is, in this game, you can plant Kirby down when you have something in your mouth, and then he turns into like a rotating turret. What level is this? I don't remember this. What is this? Anyway, you play Kirby down, and he's like a rotating turret, and that helps you aim a little bit better. Uh, you can see he's almost in turret mode right here. Um, that'd be kind of a neat thing to add to a 3D Smash game, because if people like all around you in 3D space, even if you can see where they are, like locking into them and attacking them well may require sort of like plant yourself and then angle your attacks appropriately. Um, you know, because in this game, there's no back airs, right? Everywhere you turn, your character rotates, but in Smash, when you turn left, well, I guess there could be back airs. You just turn in a direction, then jump, and that kind of locks your position. But again, you'd have to fiddle a lot with what does it mean to attack in 3D. Your attacks probably have to be slower and a little more simple, uh, but it could probably achieve all the same interesting Smash dynamics that we know and love and actually have the all the action take place in like a box-like screen instead of like a horizontal um, horizontal widescreen stage so that's my easy answer quick answer for how to smash translate in 3d uh it'd be different but it'd be i'd, I'd love to take on that challenge with the with a talented team why not and likewise a friend named fernando asked what would a minimal smash look like what how many things i could cut or how many things could i add just to make the game like still smash but take away so many other elements right um, you know, Smash needs a double jump. That's kind of been in there from the conception. Smash needs... What is it? Smash needs, you know, different tags. You definitely need specials because that's how the characters are special. The whole dynamic knockback, I think, is most accentuated by... edge guarding, being able to fall off the edge and, like, knock people around. So you pretty much have to keep that. Um, Barbari Ball was made, a Smash Brothers style game without a shield, so you could replace shielding. But, you know, shielding is so comfortable for people, and, and dodging through it, p things is so um, it, easy for people to understand and do. So aside from cutting out modes like single player and all that, and just kind of keeping everything the verses, I always enjoyed single button melee. 
and this is like the start of how I started to understand what my own tastes and opinions uh, are. But I thought single button melee was neat, not because the game was like super deep and interesting, or not because it was super deep, because it was kind of weird not having a jump button, and it was weird not having an up B to recover, and it was weird having to hit up on the stick and only having the A button. But the reason I like single button melee, because again, it encouraged that ground game, because you couldn't L cancel. It encouraged people to walk backwards and, for and forth and really sort of um, carefully consider what incoming attacks are gonna be, because you can't shield and you can't roll and you can't do all that. Gave it a little Street Fighter feel, and even though I didn't know then, part of what makes Street Fighter feel the way it does is standing your ground and playing footsies for the most part. So as long as you make smash moves simple enough and the jumping and attacking clear enough, you can actually take away a lot of defensive options and still have a really fun game. Um, obviously taking out like really nitpicky, minute stuff like L canceling and dash dancing and maybe multi air dodge and stuff like that. Like you could get by without it, and you can obviously get by without items. But the Smash Core is pretty much what you see on the screen: a character jumping around, throwing out attacks, and trying not to get fall off the stage. I think when you have that and you stay true to that, just with like basic attacks and stuff, that's core Smash. Clones and Echo Fighters. I kind of hope they clone and Echo Fight Palutena and give her like at least two sets because she has such a wide array of custom moves in Smash Wii U and just the, you know, clamp her down to one move set. I think would kind of squander some of that, but whatever. As long as she's relevant and a little bit more relevant in the meta than she is now, that'll be worth it. I don't mind clones. I don't mind things that um, mimic each other's design space but add a unique twist. Lucas and Ness are different enough. Fox and Falco by now are very different, but even in Melee, they're very different. Um, Ganondorf, still Captain Falcon S, but at least now he has a sword. Um, I think Dr. Mar is a joke, but now he's back. <laughs> so, I don't think it hurts anything. And I like the idea of even if you pick an Echo Fighter, there's things that are different about him. A straight-up copy like Lucina, well, Lucina's not, that's not a good example. A straight-up copy like well, Dark Pit's not a good example. I actually want a Dark Pit to be a lot more different than he is now. I don't know why people pick him over Pit. Maybe just that horizontal knockback from the side B, but more differences is what I like. Whether it comes from some weird custom move amalgamation or they figure out a way to make uh, Echo Fighters just different on their own. That's all the design space. That's all the mode and features. Um, if you guys didn't know, let me see. I'll just pull this over here. I designed a board game in the Brawl era, so... I designed a board game that basically said like Brawl is really unbalanced, but that doesn't mean we can't have, uh, where is my Smash board? board game? Doesn't mean we can't have fun in some kind of capacity, being able to play all of our favorite low tier characters, even uh, against high tier characters like um, Meta Knight and stuff, right? So I came up with this idea and it adds an extra strategic layer on top of Smash Brothers. And I kind of, I made a video of it. I'll just explain it briefly. Oops. If I can find it. Here it is. So I basically explained that uh, crew battles is like four people versus four people. And sometimes one person can just dominate and beat everyone else down. And that leaves the other players going like, what do we do? I don't know. So. And I also said that Smash has a lot of different kinds of ways you can play, 1v1, 2v2, and sometimes 2v1, and uh, with items and stages and characters. And even though we all have one tournament rule set, there's all these different ways that people are good and kind of want to express themselves in the game. So I figured, why don't we make a crew format named Smashboard that kind of is a solution to all these things. So we take a grid-based game that's kind of like Advanced Wars. But I just use a chessboard, and we use these pieces here. And depending on how the pieces line up between you and your opponents, it creates matches. If it's like a just side by side like this, those are two 1v1 matches. Uh, if there's a group like that, like blue team versus green team, it's a team match. So you can like dynamically team with various people on your uh, uh, on the board just based on who you're next to and who you're fighting. If it's like this, it's a 2v1, and if it's like this, it's a 2v1. So that's blue team versus Luigi. <laughs> Good old Smash Bros. And if it's like this, it's a 3v1. Uh, and you think like, oh, 3v1, that's incredibly broken. One, getting in that formation only really happens when there's only one guy left. Uh, 
So that's kind of a funny way to end it in dramatic fashion. Yeah, true that. We actually played this at some of our tournaments that we hosted, uh, Prince Bistro tournaments, and it was a lot of fun. Um, there's other wrinkles to the game. I think the rules are posted somewhere, but essentially you can never lose more stock than your opponent has. Okay, so I guess the other thing I should say is every player has like five stock, um, and every match is like one-minute matches. So every time you match up with someone, you try to take out as many stock in that one minute as possible, but that pretty much creates the whole like multiple battle fire emblem feel where like a character goes up, weakens you a little, and next time you can move around and attack somebody else and weaken it a little, and you're never just knocked out from this one game. It's almost impossible to be knocked out from one game. Um, so there's like little wrinkles to the rules like that, and it's really fun. The other cool wrinkle was the lower you are on the tier list, the more squares you move. Just a simple way to make nerf Meta Knight. <laughs> Meta Knight moves one square, so if you really want to stick to that character, you're not going to be moving around the board much, but if you're playing Pit, you know, I get to move freaking five squares, and, and that was like a lot of fun. But the only reason moving is fun also is because, where is it? I put these little chips down on the, the board, and those represent the, the um, different items that you can bring into the battle and set the rules for items or different stages. So if you love playing Pokemon Stadium, you know, you got to get to that chip first, right? So there's reasons to get out on the board, there's reasons to stick next to your friends, there's reasons to play non-tier characters, and there's opportunity to play all kinds of different matches, even ones that seem lopsided like 2v1, without feeling like the whole game's rigged and everything's out of your favor. Like, even in the 2d1, you may just lose one, maybe two stock. But, um... It's fun. Like, it stresses a whole bunch of what I like about Smash, and I think Smash Tour should have been like this. So, like, it's, psh, that's Smash board. <laughs> and as my final item, as my reflection on the last 20 years of Smash uh, and 20 streams, I wanted to just give a shout out to the entire Smash community, uh, all my favorite players, all the things that they do. They're super friendly. They're super interesting people. They all just love the game. That goes a long way with a game like Smash because, you know, all the Nintendo's favorite mascots coming together and acting like one big family kind of gave us a template to all be one big, happy, Nintendo-loving Smash family as well. Uh, it's been around for, like, like, it, like I said, about 20 years, and it's been crazy. Um, grown up a lot. Some of my favorite players are, like, Esam and, and Mewtwo King and CT0, and then, like, a lot of underrepresented character players that just play diehards of just random low-tier characters. I love all those guys, right? I love seeing them succeed. I love thinking about ways of, like, what would I change in the game to help these players still, you know, love their character, and uh, but just do better in general. Like, that's why balance is super important to me. It's not just like, oh, there's six characters, and well, these guys are cool, and everyone else sucks, so play one with cool people. There's people out there working hard and playing on all these different characters. And if there's a way to, you know, balance out their strength without completely just having a character jump from the bottom to the top of the tier list, unique ways to make every character unique, feel special, and then express each player's unique play style, like that's the goal. Because that's really the only reason I play Smash. Like I could sit here and lab all day by myself and write notes and write combos down, but really who cares? Like the reason I do that is because, well, the game's really cool, but <laughs> I want to see these things reflected in the community. I want to see what players think about it. I want to see somebody take these characters to the limit. I want to know what the limit is. Like, this is all interesting, and it wouldn't be nearly this interesting if nobody was playing this game. I've played plenty of games before that have really well-designed multiplayer modes, really well-designed games that almost no one heard of, and it's just kind of sad. You do a Google search, and nobody's heard of, you know... Aeroporter, like nobody's dug into that game and gotten high scores. So when I got high scores, I'm like, anybody else want to talk about this? There's nobody on the planet, almost. I bet there's a few people, but there's almost no one that either knows about it or has played it to that level, and it's just lonely. Like, it sucks. So it's good that Smash is super popular. It's neat that Melee still survived. I always say play the game that makes you happy. Uh, play the game that you like the most. Just watch what you say, because... There's a, I mean, we tore ourselves apart. It was just so ugly back in the Brawl days, and I'm so glad that we've moved beyond that. Like, there's no reason for us to tear each other apart, and we certainly didn't have the understanding of the language to really basically say everything that I've said in this last 20 streams of talking about some games with their pros and some games with their cons and being able to celebrate their pros without having to worry too much about their cons or get too bent out of shape. You know, I've moved on with every Smash game. I like moving on because that's where the community goes, and that's partially why... As I continue to learn more about design and Smash and my own tastes, 
you know, the, the newer, newer Smash games have really met me there and pushed me beyond. So, obviously, Smash, my favorite series of all time. Uh, shout out to all these different players like DK Will. DK Will is so cool because he has his stream and his DK crew. He keeps a spreadsheet of all of his combos. He's really encouraging people to be like, let's raise the DK meta. And that's the kind of stuff I love. Eason does the same, works with a few other Pikachu players, but, you know, he has his own fan base. There's people like, what is it, like J-Tails and, and others that really are serious about helping other people get better. Shout out to my old Dallas community with people like Dakpo who have lessons and teach people in person and, and really monitor what they do and come alongside them. Shout out to players like Lightning Cam, who was a student of Dakpo and he, he went from like, you know, just a little kid that hit buttons too much to now he's like a real competitor. He does really well at tournaments. Uh, I saw him at the, um, I saw him at that last 2D, 2GG tournament. Was it Hyrule Saga? I saw him in the crowd or maybe it was a tournament just after that, but, oh, it was CEO. I saw him hanging out in CEO. It was cool. Uh, so yeah, like regional differences are cool. Every every region's got their own superstars. Um, every region has their hidden bosses. The game's so big, and we're represented by so many different nations now. Like our our grand finals are like five different, or our, our top eight, top sixteen, are like five different nations at least. Right? It's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, super proud of Smash. Always excited to see what they're gonna do, and I'll probably never stop playing, which is kind of scary because. I put way too much time <laughs> and I got plenty of things to do. But hopefully you've enjoyed this super long stream and this super long series of 20 years of Smash and 20 streams. My name is Crazy Kirby Kid. I got my name playing Smash. I was the best Kirby in the world. Uh, it's because I love it so much. And you can kind of tell because it all started way back day one, Smash 64. Um, I need to check this off. We covered freaking 91 different topics. Um, Here's my resume again, playing day one Smash 64, hosted tournaments for, or assisted in every Smash game, best Kirby in the world, did my own Smash research and polls and have my own data tables and everything, did a Smash co uh, podcast for a startup Wi-Fi community site that was also started by the same guy who's now working on Icons, an old friend of mine, I uh, did a personal podcast of Smash with interviews and stuff about the community, made an indie game, you saw Bari Bari Ball, made my own company, serving Smashes on Twitter and OneSmash.net, I've showed that off on the stream written over 66,000 words about Smash, just really teaching myself game design through Smash and really understanding what my own tastes are. It's just been a long, long journey. Uh, we released, once Smash, we released Tech of the Week videos, so there's a bunch of those, and producing those and trying to get a new tech out every week was a lot of fun, so I'm glad people actually appreciated them because, you know, trying to push the meta is like an impossible, trying to teach people is already hard enough. We're trying to do it in an in a environment like the grand community of Smash and communicating through YouTube videos. Some have done it better than others. Shout out to the Beefy Smash dudes. Um, they wrote that tech train just like we did as long as they could. Now they're just like making gag videos and funny videos. But I bet they're going to be back in full force when the new game comes out. But Beefy Smash dudes have seriously made their own community um, and have their own followers and really taught a lot of people a lot about Smash. Uh, even if they had to find the tech from people like us. <laughs> but in general, they have a really good way of explaining um, tech and making videos so people can understand. So shout out to them. Um, I gave a talk about Smash Brothers at Indicate and game design. Played 5.4 thousand hours of Smash in my lifetime. As you saw the board video game just now, Smash Boards. So now you know about that. I have a handmade Kirby blanket and it was approved by Sakurai himself on Twitter. And I've been interviewed about Smash and different things that I know about the community for a long time. And I guess the only last thing to add is I have a bunch of Kirby plushies. <laughs> I have a bunch of Kirby plushies. And I buy one just about every time I go out of state for a tournament. So I got a whole collection over there. I'll just grab them and show you. Hold on. Do I even have like a view that's like full screen webcam? It says full screen webcam. Will you disappoint me? Yes, you disappoint me. Ah, <laughs> uh, scene two, scene five. I'll try to get something to show you guys. Nope, that's Mario Maker. Don't do that. <laughs> No, that's my desktop. Don't do that.
and six. I'll just show you in the corner. This is my little Kirby here. I forget which tournament I got this one. I think this was Evo, uh, the second Evo Smash Wii U was at it. I had the, and here's my little Samurai Kirby and my little Sweeper Kirby and one of my original plushy Kirby's and I got Puzzle Kirby. Where is Puzzle Kirby? Where are you? Puzzle Kirby, I think I left him at my old home before I moved. I left the Samurai like Kirby there, I only left some of them. Uh, but yeah, that, that's it for me guys. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, leave a like if you liked it. If you have any questions, you know, find me. I'm at Serving Smash or just Kirby Kid on Twitter. Until next time, we're going to do streams of plenty of other games now, but that's just been a long series. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.